You know, a couple weeks ago, I was at Loretta Lynn's, the Rocky Mountain ATVMC Amateur National Motocross Championship, where the future professional stars make their way through. And that's where the foundation is laid. And even when you get to the very top level, I know people are gonna look and they're gonna say, hey, Eli Tomac is a now three-time champion of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Adam Sin Cerullo is on top in points and might be the 250 champ by the end of next week. Look at the heritage of these guys. These guys were known as young kids, but we're gonna learn some things on the Weed Show today that it doesn't happen quite as easily as it looks, but I've got some escorts here. That's a solid look. I got my boy Nash from New right Jersey. Here. Right here, I got yeah. the shirt. I'm uh, the only one that bought it. Yeah, yeah, it, we, yeah. It actually, paid money for the podcast yeah, podcast shirt. Sure. My daughter bought it for me for Christmas. It's on wow, Santa Claus. And my man Markley, we've got the. Uh, I don't know if this is officially licensed by Red Bull, but we're gonna get a ride through the pits here at Butts Creek for the Weed Show. Brought to you by Race Tech. Let, let's hit it, guys. You know all about the gold valves. Your suspension will be plusher. It will have better bottoming resistance. You'll have more traction. And gold valves are made and engineered in the USA. And I will give you a set. Just email us with the link below the video. Now, you might also see below the video people commenting that the lens on my camera is usually really dirty. So shout out to my buddy, Brett Smith, that we went fast, who actually custom made this terry cloth so I could do this. <laughs> Thanks, we went fast. I got a clean lens right now. So we're gonna take a little tour. Courtesy of the golf cart, there's the AMA people wrapping things up. Honda is done. Yeah, people. Eli Tomac is your champion to get into the 450 division. Now, we all know that Eli Tomac's dad's gnarly. We also found out today how gnarly the mom is. She was, uh, uh let's hang a left. Taking on, people man. out, we're taking people out. Nash! Oh, he's dead. Taking people out. We're going down. Woo! We're gonna take another tour of the pits. Yeah. Eli Tomac's mom, did you know that once she, she once finished second in the World Downhill Mountain Bike Champion, uh, Championships? That's right, just as gnarly as the dad. So with that heritage, you would assume, look, if you wanna build a champion like Eli Tomac, you have these gnarly parents and all their experience building training programs, and they were hammering on him at age four and five and six. What was actually unveiled as I interviewed the Tomac parents at the end of the day is, they purposely held him back quite a bit. It's only around age 13, the super mini days, that they really started going for it because there is a specific window where you get burned out if you have too much too soon. So the heritage, those people are having a good time over there. Is that your crew? There's another group. We're going there. Oh! Oh, it's gonna be a good group right here. It's gonna be a good group. Yeah, we're gonna make a little pit stop. Their heritage told them, you can't have too much too soon. You have to respect the sport. It will burn you out and you have to have fun. Don't take it too seriously. This is a serious business, especially at this level. Hang on. Is this serious business right here? Jay, it's serious business. This is, yeah, it looks like serious business. Yeah, hang on, I gotta get that. Yeah, this is good times over here. I don't know this guy. Oh, Hilton, what's up? Hey. Yeah, yeah, there's no logos on these shirts. The only name. I'm just soaked in sweat. I mean, after all I got. So, it's serious business racing at the top of this board, but the Tomacs were smart enough to realize you can't make it too serious too soon, and they actually held back. You have to respect the sport and how difficult it is. Yes. Now, in the other class, you have Adam Cincerullo, and most people would say, look, dude, he was a prodigy from age four. He's got the talent. There's nothing you can do. How are you going to stop this? But did he learn to respect the sport, or what? This sport threw a wallop at him. We were here six years ago and he sucked. He was terrible when he first turned pro. And then we're like, well, the next year he'll figure it out. He did for a little while in Supercross and then it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. It would eventually seem like inevitable that Adam C. Cirillo is going to rule the sport was starting to look like, it's not inevitable, it's actually just not going to happen at all. You have to respect the sport, no matter what the heritage is, no matter what the talent is, no matter how easy it seems like it's handed to you on a platter. Your parents are mountain bike champions and they know more about athletics than anybody else. It'll be easy. You have unbelievable talent and you're winning on a 50, it'll be easy. It's never actually that easy. This part is, it's pretty easy, right? You guys working real hard? Yeah. It's really difficult, really difficult, yeah. But on the racing side of the series, we're gonna keep taking a tour. No doubt, Eli Tomek. Yeah, we're gonna come back, don't worry. They want us back, yeah. Bye. All right, bye everybody, I'm back in. So both C and Cerullo and your champion again, Tomek, have learned you have to respect the sport. It can burn you out and it can be very difficult. There are no guarantees. Oh, the Teddy Parks here, look at that hair. Hang on, let me get, first of all, I like the long horns that you got on the front of the semi. Oh, thank you, man. We that, come that, to Hornham, you know? Huh? I would come to Hornham. You're coming to Hornham? Come to Hornham. Horny? Well, that's what that's what Roger Costa said. You know what I told him? Uh. That's why I got my Peterbilt. <laughs> <laughs> Peterbilt. I just want to touch the hair. Zane Merritt. 
Yeah, that's good right there. Hey, hey, you, know that's the, good. you know the cartoon of the guy called Coda? Yeah. That's him. That's him come to life. <laughs> All right, we'll keep riding with our guys. All Thanks, right. Teddy Parks. Right, thank you. That's the, uh, the professional yeah. journey. Yes, sir. Oh. Hey, they call us tow truck journey. I'm coming to watch the rear. <laughs> it's Texas humor. Uh, we'll keep cruising here. So these riders have learned to respect the sport. It never comes easy at motocross, even when you appear to have everything rolling your way, even at an extremely young age. And Tomac has had his ups and downs. But I want to get a little deeper inside the numbers. Hey, I feel like we always have hey. this story about Tomac is this guy who Tomac. he's good on some days, but then he has all these wildly bad days. Um, you realize that Tomac, by my calculations, hey. switched to Kawasaki in 2016. That's four seasons. I think he's missed one race with injury. He got hurt in Anaheim one last year. Didn't race round two at Houston. That's it. He's made every one of these nationals over that four year span. I know he had a huge crash in Colorado in 2015 when he was dominating, but that's about it. There is a program, there is a method to the madness, except for last week when he was using the post pounder to fix some fence at the uh, Tomac Ranch and he hurt his arms and that's why he struggled with Unadilla. I I'm in, I'm in dude, I'm, I'm in for the celebration. I, I would like to know what's going on inside that rig and inside that motorhome. Chase Sexton just getting a ride out of here. Where's your guys? Where's SMDR? They're back. Let's bring it. So Tomac, on the surface has had some inconsistency but let's be honest he hasn't missed more than one race in four years that's quite a solid program i think the tomas have figured out how difficult it is the first thing you've got to do is stay in it you got to stay healthy there are so many potential pitfalls that can come your way in this sport and there's no doubt that c and cirulo learned that the hard way as well and then we think well, when it is finally all going your direction and there's championship motivation, you're seeing Cirillo and Ferrandis, well, then that's going to be easy. You can pretty much guarantee that those guys are going to go one, two in the motos to the end of the year. They did it at Washougal. They did it at Unadilla. But then today, where did Shane McElrath come from? Every time you think you've got it figured out, they change it. McElrath has had a bad season and suddenly it was his best race he's ever had in Lucas Oil for motocross. He dominates both C and Cirillo and, and uh, Fernandez had days they probably wish could have been better. They both left some points on the table, but they worked out just about even. AC still is in position to win the title, but I know you're all gonna say, yeah, he was in position to win the title in Supercross, and look what happened. That's right. So we still have some drama on the line. The Tomax, C and Cirillos, C and Cirillos, they know. As difficult as this sport is, you cannot take anything for granted. It sure looks like the son of two great mountain bike racers who was very talented from an early age was destined to be this good. There is no such thing as destiny in this sport. Many things out of your power have to fall into place and then you've got to do everything in your power to make it happen. I think our last piece is to go hang out. This says SMDR Parking. That's yes. Southern Maryland Dirt Riders. This is my buddy Mark. By the way, Mark Adams. He hosted uh, Grant Langston and I. We went riding on Friday. How'd I do? Awesome. That's the guy ripping. can ride. The guy can rip. Yeah, yeah, well. I can ride a dirt bike. I can shift gears. <laughs> I can like stand up while riding. That's about it. Here's, Luckily, this is my crew out here. Yeah. Well, this is it. This is uh, these guys do great work. Yay! This is a local riding club. Can I classify yes, as that? Absolutely. All right. So Southern Maryland dirt riders. I wanted you guys in the video. These are my Jersey boys. Nash. Yeah. What's up, brother? Hill. Yeah. Uh, these guys. We got to go riding uh, on Friday. Uh, and this is cool. So you guys are all riders and enthusiasts, but what do you guys do for Bud's Creek? You, you pitch we, in. We pitch in. We do the flagging. We do the safety flagging. All these guys stand out in the hot 100-degree uh, weather yep. for hours on end and uh, get a lot of grief from everybody. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, right. Because we're not doing something right. But, but it's for yeah. love of the sport that you guys Absolutely. are doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. So let it be known to the flaggers here when people are like, these guys don't know anything. How long have you been riding? I've been riding since I was four. Okay. But, you know, I, I, 20, 20 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. Right. You you guys have all been riding your entire lives. Pretty much. 1973. Okay, riding 73. That's the flagger crew at Bud's Creek. And, and this guy is fast as snot in the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fast as snot. Fast as snot. More videos to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of you guys, I got to ban the footage that you got. <laughs> uh, you can use my GoPro footage, none of yours. Uh, all right, that's our weed show. I want to thank. Yeah, they're pumped over there. I don't even know. I yeah, I, I don't even know who they are. Yeah. I know you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, podcast, podcast. So there it is, folks. The, the sport has pitfalls. Sometimes you need experienced people to do yellow flags. Crashes happen. Sometimes rely Tomac, and even on your good days, you don't get the results we expect. Or you're Adam C. Cirillo, and you had six years that worked out terribly. That's how difficult this sport is. But you know what? That's just going to make those titles feel that much sweeter to run that gauntlet. Tomac's done it. 
Let's see if Sincerlo can. See you next week. America! Do it! Woo!